Okay, so today was closing arguments for the Jody Arias case, done by the prosecution, which is Juan Martinez, and um, I watched it, and <laughs> um, I wrote down what he, um, like the main sentence that he started off with and then just kind of just did points from there and um i tried to get exactly what he said but i was like he was like kind of typing so fast and i was like typing so fast i mean he was talking fast and i was typing fast but i think i got the gist of what he started out with um so he goes um uh, this individual the defendant jody ann Arias, killed travis alexander even after stabbing him over and over again and even after taking a gun and shooting him in the face she will not let him rest in peace so that's that set the mood for the day um, so then he first focuses on the, in on the fact that she is not a nice person and she lied to every single member of the jury to their faces while under oath. That was like a big theme of what he was trying to, um, trying to like almost like hammer into their brains. Like she lied to you, like, like, oh yeah, they can say all these other things, but she sat there and lied to you people. She wasted your time. Um, that was a lot of what, um, you know, he, he really tried to get across today. Among other things. Um, he then starts to talk about how she blames everybody for her actions, for what happens to her, but herself. Nothing is her fault. Um, he goes, can't you see that's not her fault? At least that's what she's, that she wants you to believe. A lot of the different points he made, that's what he would say at the end of it. Like, oh, it's not my fault. I can hit the backspace button and look at people's emails. It's not my fault that... Um, I, I, I saw his text messages, you know, like, she wanted to blame everybody but herself for every single thing that happened to her in her life. Um, he goes through the timeline of the relationship, of course, mentioning the lies and the manipulations and going behind his back of looking at his emails and text messages. Um, talks about the, when the stalking begins after they broke up, um, she moved closer to him, but of course, it's his fault that that's what she did. Um... And then I, I kind of mentioned that he, you know, he had like perfect timing, perfect emphasis on every, like certain key words. Like he was just getting everything apo uh, across. Um, I said I love his timing, the way he speaks, so calculated but so natural at the same time. Uh, she starts to take away from him all that he has left, his reputation. He is not here to testify. Um, there's no proof that there was any abuse, no calls to 911, nobody knew about it, it wasn't written down, no one knew because it never happened. Um, it's amazing he's uh, doing this with no notes, he lives and breathes his trial, he is what every prosecutor should be. That's what I said, and that's what I believe, and um, it's not even an attempt to manipulate you, their lies, again, you know, telling them that, she, you know, she's been lying this whole time. How can you believe anything she says? She's li She's a liar. She's an admitted liar. And she's just lied through her her way through this whole thing. Um, uh, I'm extreme. Uh, Travis wrote um, to somebody on AOL Instant Messenger, I'm extremely afraid of Jody Arias because she, because of the stalking behavior. And that was maybe a month before she killed him, um, and I lost my place, oh, he also wrote to her, this was May 26th, they had, like, this huge, like, fight where they, um, that, where they, like, broke up for good, um, he says, you're the worst thing that ever happened to me, uh, and Juan Martinez says, those were the truest words smoke, spoken in this case, although he is not here to say them, we have it through his words. Um, he says, you are a sociopath, you're evil, you only cry for yourself. This is all Travis saying this to her, um, you know, you know, a week or so before uh, she killed him. Um, so then Juan goes, are you going to let her scam you? Are you going to let her, are you going to buy her lies? Are you going to believe what she tells you? Um, so then May 28th is when she begins to plan the murder. Um, he talks about going to her grandparents' home and stealing the gun and makes it look like a burglary. She ta uh, talks about the gas cans and using the uh, cash and the receipts and everything. You know, he just basically went through the whole timeline of what, like, what was going on in her head, what she was doing, what she was planning. Um, so, talking about the car, uh, 
rental. Um, so then he goes, it's like a field of lies that has sprouted around her. Another lie, another weed grows around her. And then he mentions, um, he's talking about the, um, the receipts and how much she paid for the gas and the gas cans. And, um, I lost my place. Oh, I guess that's the price of premeditation these days, $12.96. Um, and a lot of people felt very strongly about the way he said that. It was something that, you know, kind of just like, you know, kicks it up a notch. Um, he mentioned that he di she dyed her hair. Um, he brings up the fact she lies so much you can't believe anything she says. Again, um, brings up the skateboarders and the license plate. The only person that would do something like that is someone who lies because it didn't happen. Um, and then they go into recess. So then he starts off, before she left California, she turned off her phone so she couldn't be tracked. She knew the code for the garage. She walked in and stood in the doorway and watched him. Um, and he goes, who does that? Um, so he, uh, goes, stop pointing a finger at him and wagging it like being a Mormon is somehow precludes you from being human. Basically, she, you know, she's trying to make up all these things that, you know, that somehow him wanting to have sex with her turned into something evil just because it was convenient for her and for her case. Um, if anybody is defenseless in this case, it isn't the defendant, it's Travis. Um, he explains the murder and the time that happens up until as if he frantically goes around the bathroom trying to save his life. He puts up the crime scene photos of the blood on the sink and the autopsy photos of the stab wounds on his back and the back of his head. He explains how Travis ran from the bathroom and down the hallway trying to get away from her. If she didn't know what was going on, if it was in the heat of passion, you wouldn't go, you wouldn't do what you would to cause death. Basically, he's saying if you were in this fog that you kept saying that you were in, you wouldn't have slit his throat. Like, that is just a calculated move. That is something that's saying, I want to kill you, so I'm going to slit your throat. Um, so that's basically what he was saying there. And I lost my voice again! Da, 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 da. Yes. He goes through what happened... After she stabbed him, after she slit his throat, she drags him back to the bathroom and shoots him in the head. She's killed him three times over. Is that enough premeditation? Um, she cleaned up before deleting the pictures. There are no bloody footprints leading to the washing machine. She cleaned him up so her DNA would not be found on him. She brought the knife with her deliberately. She had already cleaned up before trying to destroy the evidence in the washing machine, which shows that she was in her right mind. She was obviously trying to get rid of all the evidence she could and, you know, to erase herself from being there, which means that's like a calculated thing. That's something that somebody would do knowingly. She couldn't have done that if she was in this fog. Uh, see, she had the sense of mind to put the license plate back on her car, her clothes, her and the gun, everything take with her. Um, she called Ryan, she left a voicemail on Travis's phone to establish her alibi. Um, he explains how many times she was staging the scene. He talks about her, their experts lied to them. Anything that Alice LaViolette said is contaminated. Dr. Samuel based his test on a lie that the defendant told. Um, and then we go to recess. Um, so then when we come back... Um, he talks about when she was arrested, it was a month after the murder, so she had plenty of time to think about what she was going to say if she were to be arrested. She had time to come up with her story. Um, she wants to know what the police knew so she could change her story if she needed to. Um, her defense is really based on lies. Once again, lies, lies, lies. Um, he talks about how hateful it was to accuse Travis of, uh, pedophilia, especially when he is not here to defend himself. Um... He explains a little about the jury instructions and what they should take from it and how the prosecution has proven first-degree murder. He goes on to explain how she has committed each charge and the jury instructions. So basically he went through, okay, first-degree murder, this is how we prove it. Felony murder, this is how we proved it. Um, you know, all the way down to, like, manslaughter. You know, they gave manslaughter as a choice, which... Um, people aren't very happy about, but, you know, they just kind of, you know, this is, this is how we prove second degree murder, just uh, everything, like, uh, he bit, touched on all bases, um, so they couldn't come up with a not guilty, um, 
he puts up a picture of her and Travis and her and them being happy and says this is how she wants you to believe um, and then he puts up a picture of Travis's back with all the stab wounds and he says this is the reality um, he goes Jody Arias is trying to help trying to add, sorry I don't want to mess this up Jody Arias is asking you to help her carry and fill gas cans symbolically don't leave here smelling like gasoline and the last thing that he ended everything with was what the state is asking you to do is your duty and the judge has indicated that your duty is to follow the law and she has given it to you and apply it to the facts and asking that the state is asking you to return a verdict of guilty a verdict of guilty as to first degree murder not only is as a premeditation murder, but also the felony felony murder, for no other reason than it's your duty and the facts and the law support it. And that's how we ended. And um, I believe that because this trial has gone so long, it started in January, it's four months from when they started, the jury has all this information and, you know, you could get lost some days, like, I got lost some days in, in the facts and going over the same things over and over again, and each expert going the same things over and over again, so you kind of get lost in what the big picture was, and, and for a while even I was worried, oh my gosh, what if it's not... Of what if it wasn't premeditated? I can't, rem you know, I don't have everything together in my head, even though you're taking notes. And even though you know that it is first degree murder, you, you know, you can get lost in all these things and all these things that, that, that have been going on for the last four months. But Juan Martinez perfectly set the, the table. He put everything out for them. He took out all the bullshit that, that didn't need to be talked about. All the sex stuff. All the, the stuff that, that wasn't important. And he went, he went straight to the facts. This is what, this is how it started. This is how the relationship started. This is how she was. This is how she was in all these relationships. And this is what she was thinking when she started to think, okay, I, if, no, if I can't have him, nobody can have him. And I'm going to go there and I'm going to kill him. And I'm going to say it wasn't me. And he went step by step by step by step and put it all out there. All the facts that they needed to know and took out everything that the defense was trying to say happened that didn't happen. They had no merit. There is no evidence that she was abused, that he was a pedophile, that he was a sexual deviant. He, he, just because, and what Martin said, just because he liked to have sex doesn't mean make him a monster. This just makes him human. So, um, I think he did a really good job of pointing it all out there, just saying, these are, this is what you need to know. Don't think about everything else that you've heard in the case. Think about what I've just told you in these closing arguments, and that's what you need to know, and that is what you need to know to say guilty first-degree murder. So, um, I think he did a really, 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 really good job. He didn't use any notes. It was like four and a half hours. No notes whatsoever. He was on point. He was passionate. Um, and um, it, it just really impressed me. There were times that I got a little emotional watching the family. Um, you know, especially, uh, you know, him going detail by detail. He, you know, he... He can see her behind him in the mirror while she's stabbing him in the back and he's trying to get away from her. He's not doing anything but trying to get away and she's following him and and ultimately slits his throat. And you know, just to you know, to to go there and kinda of put yourself there, it was very emotional, but it was something that needed to be done. And um as I said, he did a really good job and um he talked about the only the important things of the case that that there is evidence to and that um, the jury needed to be reminded of and um, I don't think anything that the defense can say in closing arguments tomorrow is going to help her at this point that's just my opinion so um, you know I'll watch even though Nermi is gonna be doing the closing arguments it's I don't even know how I'm going to stay awake for it, but I will, and I will do another video, and then Juan Martinez gets rebuttal, and then the case will be given to the jury, and then we'll see what happens from there. So, um, that's going to be it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for defense closing arguments.